What's up? It's me, PikaWater25, and today I am bringing to you my 100% raw opinion on the top 15 coasts at Cedar Point. Before we start, I have reached 50 subscribers. I think I'm at 51 now because I just got a new one last night. I want to give shoutouts to all of you. You're all great, but I'm going to postpone the video a little bit because I'm going to make a whole separate video on what we're going to do at this point at 50 subscribers. I'm surprised we made it here this quickly, just to be honest. So, it's good to know that I'm, I'm doing something right. It's good to know that. So, yeah. Let's, and before we start, I'm going to be excluding the Kitty Coasters in this countdown. They're destined to be low, especially Wilderness Run, which would probably be the worst. And, granted, Woodstock Express might be better than, say, Mean Streak or Corkscrew, but I have no experience to make that opinion. So, and it's my opinion as well. This 100% my opinion based on my experiences. I've been to Cedar Point four times since 2010. I have some memories, some good memories, some bad memories on all these rides. Some of, some of them I've been on all four times. Other times I've been on since like three. Sometimes I've been on them twice. And the other times I've only been on them once. So, I mean, you're entitled to your own opinion about this park. I, everyone loves Cedar Point, And I will respect your opinion if you respect mine. And if your opinion is, like, reasonable as well. If you go around saying corkscrews is the best in the park, then you probably haven't ridden everything else. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Number 15 is Corkscrew. This era looper is actually worse than Mean Streak, in my opinion. After the drop, there is this large camelback hill that simultaneously crushes your groin, shoulders, and abdomen. It is probably the single most painful event I've ever experienced on a coaster. Even more than, because, you know, it, it's, there's a difference between feeling pain the whole ride and just getting a whole, just a big wave of pain in one part. Corkscrew is currently my second least favorite coaster, uh, or third, one of those. This thing is awful. The vertical loop is clunky, the mid-course brake run slows you to a crawl, the double corkscrew thrashes your head into the restraints. The restraints are kind of weird because they don't really have that much fine tuning in order to fit you. They're bulky. And if this if Mean Streak leaves after this year, which is only a rumor, uh, I want this to go next. Even if it's like a historical landmark. First to feature three inversions, first to feature uh, teardrop loop, first coaster in um, east of the Mississippi to feature inversions. Whatever the records are. Basically, this thing should probably go. However, I'd like to see them, if this thing does go, I'd like to see them pull in Alton Towers and keep the double corkscrew and put it in as like a display, piece of history. I'd love to see that if this thing is torn down, but then again, there's probably plenty of reason to keep this here for some reason. Number 14 is Mean Streak, and everyone expects this ride to be horrendously low on the list. This, it's a well-known fact that a lot of people hate this ride. Including me. Uh, I wrote it, this I, This was the first time I wrote it, on um, uh, going this past Father's Day. I was expecting terrible pain, but wasn't as bad as I expected, to be honest. In my opinion, the boss is worst, but still, the layout is extremely uneventful. The turns, which are just slow and shaky, the drop, which is trimmed to death, and the airtimeless hills that are in the back half of the ride... They're terribly shaky, thrash you back and forth and left and right against the seat, against the restraint, against the side of the train. This ride features almost a hundred seconds of ride time from when you drop to when you hit the brake run. hundred seconds of agony. It's the longest ride I've been on when it comes to that, or one of the longest, but it's just, it's just, it's so long, but it's so bad. I'll pass, to be honest, but this will make a great RMC if that's the fate it will receive, if, as it's currently rumored. Besides, do you want, guys, little question, do you guys want me to cover more rumors on my channel? If you do, I mean, that would be pretty nice. I'd like, I'd like to cover rumors. I, I'm a guy that thinks in all the options. Pardon me. Uh, number 13 is Cedar Creek Mine Ride. An aerodynamics mine train, these don't do well. They're always in the bottom half or the bottom two or bottom three of the park. It's an old mine train operating since the late 60s, I think 1969 when it opened. I think it was one of the original five or the original ten mine trains. It's got an uneventful layout, terrible transitions, 
and cramp trains. Because I'm a big dude. I'm six feet tall or so or something. Just a bit over six feet tall. It took me an entire minute to get out of the train. The people behind us, uh, my legs, my long slender legs just got stuck. Just stuck in there. I was stuck. And just, it took me a whole minute to get out. They had to pull me out because it was just so cramped. I had to do it for the credit, though. Just for the credit. If Corkscrew does not get torn out, then I'd love to see this thing get torn out. And if they do tear it out, what I'd like to see next is a B&M flyer right over here. Because it, this coaster currently subsides over a lake or a pond or a creek or quarry or whatever. And if you have a B&M flyer over water or something scenic, you're gonna be one of the best. B&M flyers are known for if they're to be good if they interact with the terrain. So yeah, just a little thought, but let will move on. Number 12 is Iron Dragon, and what's neat about this ride is that you can take your belongings with you. I was able to take a bag, I was able to take my journal, like literally, I was writing in my journal on the ride. Snuck a pen in the spiral, started writing notes down, Started writing down next new content and analyzing the ride as I experienced it. The best part about the ride is probably the back quarter when you're doing a bunch of helixes over the pond. And maybe on hot days the mister will be going, but I don't think it will. I know the mister was fully functional five years ago. Because I've seen some old POVs. It was every single old POV I watched, it was boom, misters are going. It's a good family ride, just like Cedar Creek Mine Ride, but better. It's better than Cedar Creek Mine Ride. And I'd love to see Cedar Point keep this for the long run. However, I'm against them for the rumor putting VR on this thing. If they put VR on Iron Dragon, I could see it to probably be like one of the best coasts to do so. But VR, is, uh, if you've seen my Raging Bull VR video, VR is a catastrophe. It's basically a death sentence for any coaster's efficiency. But, moving on. Number 11 is Gemini, an aero hybrid racer. The support is wood, and this track is steel, if I remember correctly. It's a decent family ride. provides a somewhat fair amount of thrills. It's pretty jerky, though, considering it's made from aerodynamics. Jerky, but it does have some decent airtime. So it's one of those coasters that are rough, but it has some fair forces. Some decent airtime. Especially after the first turnaround, you go into this large airtime hill. It's pretty nice. And if I remember correctly, this is one of the designers, one of Arrow's head designers, favorite coasters. And just overall, the ride is mediocre, but passable. This is a solid, this is a nice addition to Cedar Point. I'm not saying solid, this is a nice addition. It definitely has its own midway. It's the only coaster, and it's, it just had a whole midway to itself. Just, yeah, this is a decent coaster and everything. It's, I think it's still on my bottom 20, though. So bottom bottom quartile of coasters. Number 10 is Blue Streak, the park's other woody other than Mean Streak, and it's been operating since 1964, making this the oldest operating coaster at Cedar Point. This ride might be woody, rough, and bumpy, but the airtime on here is fantastic. It's just one of those out and back wooden coasters where you pop out of your seat on every airtime hill. Fun fact, this was named after the local high school team, the, the Sandusky High School Blue Streaks. Passed a school on the way back from my most recent voyage. But other than the fun fact, this is a nice ride. It might be a bit rough, especially if you sit on a wheel. I know for sure I did not sit on a wheel on my last ride. I sat, I think, in the fifth row, which does not have a wheel. I don't know. I know my dad sat on a wheel, and he definitely had a much rougher experience than us. My dad went on a few coasters. He's a nice guy. So, yeah, Blue Streak, a nice addition. Definitely, it's an old classic coaster. And I'd like to see them preserve this, especially since it's such a small footprint. And now it's so much more relevant with Valorivit in the area. So, yeah. Number 9 is Magnum XL 200. This is a piece of architectural history. This is the first coaster to exceed 200 feet in height. Even with history in mind, this ride sucks when compared to being when compared to much superior hypers, say a B and M or an Intamin. This ride just sucks. It's clunky, painful, especially in the back half, and pretty generic. I mean, the turnaround is not one you'd see very often, but it's just an out and back with just little finesse. 
I mean, the best part of the ride is probably the massive airtime on the back half, but you kind of have to pay your entire blood flow to your thighs for about half an hour, even when you get off the ride. And this is the final aer aerodynamics entry on this list. We still have eight coasters to go. Most of them, if not all of them, are Intamins and b and &Ms. Number eight is Wicked Twister. A coaster of this caliber would definitely be in the top five, or maybe even top three, at other parks, smaller parks, but not here. This coaster is fantastic in its own regard. One of, it's one of the largest, if not the largest, intimate impulse coaster in operation. I mean, I will admit, this coaster is one I forget about most frequently if I'm mentioning uh, if I'm mentioning all the coasters at Cedar Point, I just always think of like the best ones and the ones I personally really like, and then the terrible ones. Because you just your mind focuses on either the best or the worst, and this is just a mediocre ride that kind of fades into, just kind of fades into. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of just hidden. Not really. It's a great coaster, but it's not really the best. It's just average at a park of this caliber. I mean, it doesn't even crack the top seven. So, yeah. I love the intensity, the speed, and the beach side location. The station is padded, which, I mean, doesn't really matter, but still, it's a nice addition to walk on padded pavement instead of just sidewalk. It's right next to a beach, so you get some good views if you're, if only if you're twisting up and just stalling. And it's a bit smoother coming down the spiral than V2. I will give it that. I don't know. I just want. To, I don't want to go too long on an average coaster. I want to save my height for the top five or top three. So up next is Rougarou, formerly Mantis, a coaster that would have easily made the bottom three on this list. This renovated B&M floorless up opening in 2015, but operating Mantis since 1996, uh, sits over a swamp packing tons of G's in its belt. This is one of the most intense B&Ms. This is an old-fashioned, intense, compact b and It has a big, noticeable roar as well. So you can hear it. Granted, this coaster kind of it sits in a dead end. But it's open. You can pretty easily get footage. It's not hidden. You can easily get footage of this ride. It features a large vertical loop, a dive loop, an incline loop, and a corkscrew. And you don't really see dive loop and in-kind loops on Flo's coasters that much. It can shake you up a bit, and it's just it's probably the it's the worst B&M at the park in my opinion. And this is the first coaster of four being built by B&M on this list, and all of them are back to back. Gatekeeper is number six, guarding the entrance of Cedar Point, flying through the gates, intimidating. Guests at the uh, at the main gate purchasing their tickets or exchanging their season passes, just screaming, "Ride me!" This ride is phenomenal. It's in my top twenty, but and it would be definitely be top three at other parks. But with such high quality rides, this doesn't really stack up. Just it, like I said, it guards the entrance, asking guests to ride at the door. It flies over and in and through the main gate. Twice. It, the actual ride is pretty forceless if it's not in back. It kind of pulses as it goes along. It's kind of notorious for that. It's probably one of the most pulsing wing coasters I've ever been on. And it features some incredible inversions, such as the wing overdrop and a rare to see on uh, dive coaster, or not dive coasters, uh, wing coasters, dive loop. The, the turnaround is an incline dive loop. You also get to see uh, Camelback Hill on this, which kind of should have been replaced for a vertical loop. And you can also see uh, a top spin, basically BNN's version of a corkscrew. You reach more momentum at the top rather than the exit entering and exiting. But still, Gatekeeper does not crack top five. It's fantastic, but I personally think there are better coasters. Number five is Raptor. This green beast has got one of the most distinguishable B&M roars of any coaster ever. It is basically a signature. You could hear this thing from the other end of the midway. You can hear this thing roaring from Gatekeeper and Max Air. You can hear this thing roaring over by the antique cars. This thing is loud and is not afraid to show it. This is a coaster that I always want to get on first. It's right there in the front. 
It always has a decent queue in the morning. I could just wait there for before until the park opens, and then boom, you could basically you just get a free ride in the front. Boom, just Raptor. Yes. And granted, this ride can whip you around, cause some headbanging on the Cobra roll and corkscrews, and it's just a bit snappy. Transitions have gotten a bit rough, and there's tons upon tons of when well, you see. You, I mean, granted, they did get a repaint, but there's still tons of like bird poop and. I've even seen a seagull perching on the ride. Not that that's a bad thing. But this thing is just a masterpiece. I want to ride this over and over again. It is intense, loud, proud, and amazing. This is the coaster that got me into a, being a coaster enthusiast. I had a Zen ride in the front row or near Zen ride. I was just my little brother. Both me and him just in the front row. We rode this thing top of the morning and I came off wanting to do coasters for the rest of my life. I decided at that point I want to learn, follow, and breathe and live coasters. That sounds weird. But yeah, Raptor is my a personal treasure to me. It's a personal treasure. Granted, it has fallen a bit in the power rankings. It used to be like 8th, and now it's about 12th overall due to the snappiness. Don't enjoy it as much, but then again, I rode in the second row my last visit. It's fantastic, though. I love this coaster. I, this is a personal treasure. I love everything about this. So, yeah, Raptor. Number four is the newcomer, Valravin. This is the top of the high class rides for me, which is the coasters from Magnum to here. The ride is ultra smooth at this point. The drop is fantastic. The inversions are wicked. The Immelman is just fantastic. Granted, the dive loop can be snappy. And honestly, it's a bit forceless. It's kind of forceless. Because it's one of those modern B&Ms. B&Ms B &Ms are B &Ms kind of losing their old school ways of just fast-paced, whipping you around inversions. But this ride is basically, it's a solid addition. This was a great addition for Cedar Point. This thing just, it kind of just still weird to me because I see it in the midway. And it's like, oh my god, I don't remember seeing that for the past several years. Yeah, I love this ride. I think it's currently my ninth favorite of all time which will change as the summer goes on, because, you know, better rides will come and better rides will go. But yeah, Valorvin, I've already done a full-length review on this, so go check it out if you want to see all the details. But Valorvin is my fourth favorite coaster in the park. Now we're going to reach the top class, the royal cast of Cedar Point, with number three, Top Thrill Dragster. This was the biggest adrenaline rush I ever had. I, it was my first ride just this Father's Day, because, you know, I wasn't a big fan of launch coasters until I came off the of Storm Runner in uh, June of 2015. Went to Cedar Point in May 2015, so I was still afraid of launch coasters. This ride is wickedly fast, tall, and just short. Short, sweet, to the point, and extremely intense. Your face is folding back from the launch. You're graying out for the entire duration of the ride. I came off of this thing just wanting more. More adrenaline, more thrills more fantasticness. I love this ride. It's better than Storm Runner in my opinion. This is my one of my favorite Intamins, one of my favorite initial launch coasters. No, my favorite initial launch coaster. The way it launches you out of the gate instead of a traditional lift hill. So yeah, Top Throw Dragster, fantastic addition, and it's right there in the center. You, This thing is just the, om the omnipresent thing in the midway. And there's bleachers, you can hear this thing roar. This thing just stands tall over the rest of the park. Now we get to number two, the underdog, Maverick. This is a very close second, but almost edged out number one, which you should probably figure out what it is at this point. And this is Cedar Point Signature Intimate Blitz, and it's one of Intimate's crown jewel coasters. This thing is low to the ground with many tight twists, whipping, snapping turns and bro just broken waves, horseshoe turns, inversions, and a launch. This thing is just so complete, brings so much to the table, and is one of the most intense coasters I've ever ridden. It almost beat number one, but the champion still reigns. I love Maverick and everything. I love this ride to pieces. I would honestly get on this thing so many times if it was reasonable, like reasonable Q, reasonable efficiency. I love this thing. This thing is just so complete, brings so much to the table, 
but just loses out just barely to Millennium Force, the innovator for modern coaster architecture into the 21st century itself. This was the first coaster to break 300 feet if you don't count the Tower of Terror at, in Australia. This coaster weighed waves, no, tsunamis upon its announcement, and 15 years later is one of the most highly appreciated coasters in the world. Tall, fast, somewhat intense, and just a Cedar Point exclusive experience. It's not as forceful as Maverick or Dragster, which are also the top class, but and it kind of vibrates along the track, because you know, it is 15 years old, it's not made with the best type of track, but there is no possible way this repels me. This is my personal favorite ride I've ever ridden, out of the 80 coasters I've ridden. This is my favorite, and this thing I want to get on every time, like three, four, five, ten times. This ride is just fantastic. So scenic, you're up against the beach going to the lift hill. I love everything about this ride. I love it. Granted, this thing has competition coming this August, and its name is Fury325. And on that note, knowing the king can be dethroned for my personal favorite, I'd like to say this is the end of my Cedar Point Top 15 countdown. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Hope you like and enjoy, and possibly subscribe if you're considering about it. I'm not forcing you to do this. And honestly, I'm coming. The big days are coming up. I'm going to Great America like three times in the next week: Saturday, Tuesday when Coastal Studios comes to town, and Thursday with some friends. It's going to be a packed week, so I probably won't have much time to record next week. But I'll see if I can make it work. Probably get a video out on Monday. I'll try and get my next video out on Monday. That's my current goal. So, that's my current thing. I'm planning on putting another review up. That's my plan. Either that, or I could start polishing another thing I had in my I have saved for months now. So yeah, other than that... I'd like to thank you, all of you subscribers, 50, reaching 50, and all the viewers, all the support you give me. I love all of you. I love all of this. I love doing YouTube. It's just such a great hobby. I'm not trying to make a career out of it, because my goal is just to share the experiences of coasters with the rest of the world. And just, I love you all. I love all of this. Just, I, I'm just short for words, especially since I had failed two other times before doing this, because of disruptions hate disruptions when I'm recording. Anyway, I think I've dragged on this outro too long. I hope you all have enjoyed, and I'd like to say, as always, peace.